Hello, everybody. Welcome to the semifinals. It's here. It's time for some TVZ. We're going to start out with Action versus Rush. This very exciting set. Here on Radeon, we've got Rush in the top right hand corner, Action in the top left, and a beautiful lineup here for us to enjoy today. Oh yeah, boy. I'm in a rush to get started with this car, saying I'm so, so pumped for this. I've been waiting a long time. Finally in the cars to booth with my boy, saying KCM, bringing you some hot StarCraft action. Really would love to see Zerg go all the way here, go to that final, see that ZVP final. So I'm ruined for Zerg, obviously. Not just because of the bias of us being Zerg casters, but because it'd be better games, I think, ZVP. Would you I think it would be uh, would be great to have that ZVP finals. I think I'll be happy no matter what we see here today. This should be an epic clash. Uh, starting out here with Action versus Rush. What do you think about this matchup here? We are in the horizontal spawn position on Radeon. This can be a pretty wild situation here. The Rush distance is very, very close by air and by ground oh absolutely saying very astute as always the, 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 with this horizontal uh, alignment of the naturals very strange not usually common in most maps so it does allow for crazy rush distances in the air so the mutilus caress is just a little bit more potent the potential for drop play also maybe a bit more strong as well so i don't know how these two players are going to choose to navigate this um early game I imagine that Action will do whatever he can to get into his strong macro mid to late game. That's what he does best, obviously. But he can play pretty much any build under the sun, like most pros. But he's, he, he's the strongest um, macro Zerg that's also aggressive. I, I can't even understate that enough. It's crazy how good he is at macro while still having a, an aggressive mindset. His Defiler play is on another level as well. Action just so, so good with his Defiler control. So... If he can get to Defiler Tech in this game, I give him a pretty good chance of taking it over Rush, but Rush is going to put the screws to him. He's going to find a way to get in there for sure and deal some damage with maybe a two racks play, maybe a, you know, a timing attack with that stim upgrade coming online. He's going to put some real pressure on action and try not to let him get into that late game tech, at least not in a good economic position anyway. Yeah, and Rush going to be throwing down that CC on 60. Not going to be doing anything too greedy, skipping this Marine. There would be a chance of a the drone coming in here and blocking that or something. So, could be very safe here, despite having the SCV scout. Just make sure nothing can slow him down. Could be also throwing down that depot on the wall to just plug that up even more. And then we also see a two hatch layer build coming out of action here, it seems. Yeah, this could also translate into a 2.5 hatch. Um... As long as he doesn't have to produce too many lings here coming up in Rush, it, it'll be on him to try to force those lings out, but he's not producing too many marines here to start. So I don't think he'll be able to force more than two lings uh, just from the positioning that we've got here already. We've got the Overlord coming over the natural. He'll see how many marines are available to Rush, and he can you know, cut as many lings uh, as possible here okay he actually built four lings a little bit surprised to see him build four mm. here but i maybe this is just from the uh, you know sort of understanding that he has of rush as a player he's expecting him to do something a little bit more aggressive yeah and rush is like uh racing exponentially towards getting straight into this uh plus one early ebay timing so he wants to get an early upgrade advantage in this matchup as well doesn't want to go for any kind of two racks pressure build knows that he probably won't get away with that against someone like action he's going to be able to identify that right so instead he's going to be doing a much more uh tech favored style of playing where you get the ebay really quick get that plus one going and then throw down your arm your, your academy so you, you don't have as many units you kind of still get a few marines and a medic out for kind of like the same timing but you don't have the potency to really really force out a response from the zerg and the ling run by threat into the natural expansion probably going to shut down any shenanigans from rush that would be possible well i guess i was wrong here we are going to have just a two uh hatch spire play he's going to be sending out a drone looks like towards the bottom left let's see if he puts that on high ground or he puts it on low ground it's been really popular recently for Zergs to put their third base on a low ground base, like another natural, uh, take control of that. Yeah, I've been doing that long. 
Yeah, it's it's been really popular lately. Um, even more than before. So I'm, I'm curious to see what action will do here. Will he put that on the low ground or is he going to go for a high ground base and a more traditional lurker defense? Yeah, it's nice to see the pros have finally caught up to my meta, but uh, this guy's going to be using the, the medic here to block up that hole. It's a nice little defense here from uh, Rush, actually, because there wasn't there would be a possibility here for action to kind of go into a speedling timing. If he wanted to, he could go up to like 15, 16 to like 24 lings and try and go for a bust here. But with a wall set up like this, especially with the medic in the wall, there's just no way you'd ever get through here. So yeah, it's really nice and safe from Rush, despite only going for one Rex. So I do like the tech choice here from Rush. He's going to pump out seven mutas here all at the same time. He should probably be getting into attack upgrade as well. We haven't seen that third hatch just yet. Um, you know, one thing that Action's been doing a lot uh, that I've seen recently here uh, in the ladder battle series is going for just two hatchery play or three hatch actually it's been mostly three hatchery play and then just never getting a third base never even attempting to get the third base letting the terran player you know run around scouting out everywhere he did this against tengu a lot um and just never take a third base eventually get in a hive a defiler lurker push into the natural and try to win that way just two base versus two base it seems impossible it, like it shouldn't work but action somehow makes it work over and over again against these strong players and it'll be up to rush to figure out that that's what's coming here and uh, identify that as soon as possible he's going to be throwing scans out all over the map trying to figure out you know where is that third and if it's just not there and uh, action denies any easy scouting with an SCV or something, he might be tricked here. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, uh, action probably one of the only players able to really squeeze out value at the pro level with this kind of style. I would argue it's pretty much down to a player style thing in him specifically because of how strong his macro is and his economy man is while also still maintaining such good unit control and being aggressive i think it allows him to get away with that as long as he's like maintaining the game state by be, like being applying the pressure like we see here to the viable forcing out stims depleting the medic energy even just this alone being this active with the muters is critical in this matchup at the highest levels to really drain the terran's resources as much as possible Three sunken colonies coming up back at home and gonna dive in here for the first time to the main base. Does pick off a turret but loses a mutilisk. Does cancel one of these sunken colonies and just continuing to bang out mutilisk. I think there should be a transition coming coming now. I see some buildings in the main base that should be a Queen's Nest and a Hydra Den, but he's going to pick off some more turrets, open up a position here to where he can really harass Rush while he's trying to move out on the map. And Rush is kind of falling for the bait here right now. He's heading out on the map where Sunkins are just being produced back at home and this uh, natural is being opened up here. Oh, this could be a best case situation, but actually he's a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger on that. There is a really good bunker set up with some more bio on the ramp that he didn't want to quite commit to, because if this attack does go poorly, he could just die to the, the not only to the counter attack, but then not having enough mutilists to control the map anymore. He needs to make sure that the, the bio from the main can never meet up with this bio that's now pressuring the counter attack. But it's, it's going to be a tight hold here, I think. He's going to make a go freeze and stim and go for the first slug. There's no way these other slugs are going to finish the time set. This is really bad news right now. He's coming right now and start choking me like these marines right now if he doesn't do it, he's gonna be in trouble okay so he's gonna get all of these sunkens basically but now the links are gonna come in finally clean up this bible but now he's opened up at least but overall this probably is going pretty action favored still he didn't lose that many muters here with the cleanup so despite losing all those sunkens and the investment of those drones really it's not that big a deal providing he can maintain map control well rush did manage to put up a bunch of turrets back at home he's got th four turrets now in the natural whereas before that bust he had zero so he's actually going to be able to mine once again from his natural. I'm really curious how far along his tank tech is. Uh, he might want to get some tanks out here. He will definitely want to get a, a vessel out as soon as possible to uh, counteract this push. But you can see Rush is sending army around the map. He's just looking for a base right now. He's super confused. And this is something that we've seen time and time again, actually, recently from action is players like Tengu, players like Rush running around the map going, where the heck is your third base? Because that's really the standard. You need to have a third base. The traditional mentality is you have to have a third base to contend with the Terran player uh, in this time in the game. You need that third gas online, but Action just says, no, I don't need that base. I'm just going to keep on pressuring you and go to Defiler and win 
Uh, you know, with the with the Defiler push, and it is crazy to me that this is still work. He's killing off so many SCVs here at the Natural. Rush is super confused. He's still sending those Marines around. At least he's getting the confirmation that there's no third base here. He's still looking for that, though. He's got plus one, plus one, for threatening the bust here once again. It's going to force action to build a bunch of sunken colonies, and that's really going to limit his economy here going forward. Yeah, it's going to be really tough, actually, because he... I think he's like kind of misread the situation completely, as most Terran players would. It doesn't really have the same ebb and flow of the game. Now he's going to be trying to break into this natural spot. There's only two Sunkens here, and more Marines coming in from the rally point as well to rejoin these forces. Not enough muters to stop these Marines right now. There are two Lurker eggs that are about to finish more things, but they will get gunned down really quickly. GG finally called from action. The Terran taking a quick lead in this Saiyan already. Action's going down so far. Here we go to game number two, Jadong versus Rush on Troy. This should be a wild match, guys. Troy has been a bit of a thorn in my side on ladder recently. I just vetoed it yesterday because it was getting too annoying, but it's always fun to watch some pro players, uh, you know, struggle on this map here. Well, yeah, it's not necessarily the most fun map to play on, obviously, but I actually think the, the games that we see on it are really interesting to watch. So as long as I'm not the one having to play on it, I'm, I'm more than happy to watch these guys uh, come up with some creative stuff on these maps. So. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree here. We've got Rush going to start off with an uh, ID depot at the front. Beside it, these assimilators, it looks like he wants to block this up and potentially go into something like a 111 or maybe even a full-on wraith build that's been really popular here parents don't really like to play normal games on this map do they oh no absolutely not and it is cross map so the race will have slightly less rush distance but because the map will then be so open because of the having like a non-linear trajectory to the base it may also give a little bit of an advantage to the the wraith user here as well so sometimes cross map can favor the wraith user in certain circumstances i'm curious if that will ever come to pass we do see a okay 12 gas from rush okay so it's, it's, he could still go for this two wraith build but it is a he didn't go for the fastest gas possible is there 11 gas or anything crazy well one thing that we ought to mention here is that the uh, assimilators are a very vulnerable spot for the terran in this matchup right if the Terran player, uh, you know, goes for this mass Wraith style and it doesn't totally kill the uh, Zerg player, if they are able to get some Hydras out on the map and kill those Assimilators, the later game stage for Terran becomes almost unplayable. There's, <laughs> there's almost no way to comfortably macro uh, with your main cutoff from your natural. So that could be coming into to account here. That could be... Uh, a follow-up here from Jadong, just going for some Hydras, kill that, uh, those two assimilators, and then, you know, just build a bunch of spores back at home, be really defensive, and slowly grow on the map while, you know, Rush is struggling super hard to macro uh, from, you know, the one base with Wraith. They really don't scale well into the late game, so you'll have to transition, and everything is just really, really hard, I would say, uh, if that does come to pass. Mm. I, I, also, I'm not so confident in Jadong's ability to deal with certain styles that Rush could go for here. Like, once upon a time, Jadong would defend against a two wraith play like, with, with, with with quite poise and like well executed, like walking that tightrope perfectly and have a perfect amount of hydras at all times, and you know really min max the situation. These days, I'm not as confident in his ability to deal with those those, those kinds of builds. But it looks like we're not going to be having a two wraith two pot wraith build anyway. Instead, it might look like a, just a, a standard kind of like 1 1 1 mech play. Hmm, this is, this is interesting. Right after the factory throwing down the, cre the uh, command center here, he will have a vulture out to just keep this, this safe from any sort of ling harass, at least. And he's going to go into a machine shop right after this with that a starport follow up. Will he be going for a vulture drop here? That's kind of what it's looking yeah, like to me. Run now. By. Vulture run by or drop, yeah. It's one of those two things. So he'll probably get that vulture speed right away and then get a drop ship out here. Threaten the run by maybe and then go for that drop into the main. Either that or it's going to be that run by like you said and uh, into a wraith to just start picking off uh, overlords around and slowing down Jadong as much as possible. So Jadong here, he's going to have to react to the actions of Rush. He'll have to put up some sort of barrier 
over there at the front of his natural to ensure that run buys don't occur. At the same time, he's going into a three hatch play with his spire. So this is um this is an interesting matchup here. This has played out many many a time, and there's like a very vulnerable uh, time here for the Zerg player right as the spire is just getting close to finishing up and the vulture speed is done that's when the most danger can occur for the for the zerg here when they can actually take the most damage right and and jadong did build his spire behind the minerals and the natural so it kind of helps him a little bit with the the vulture in the natural being run running by the back of the minerals there but it doesn't help stop the actual run by into the main at all so there is a little window here where this wraith's going to come in and start being a little bit annoying and Jadon's going to be thinking about the one-on-one -on -one. he is going to be immediately thinking about vulture run by and about uh vulture drop into the main base 100 percent what's going through Jadon's mind right now and he's not really 100 percent prepared for this run by he does have these links in the blocking up this little gap here to, to, to kind of prevent critical damage but he will lose a few drones no matter what happens in this natural expansion so rush is going to be oh he's going to get into the main base right away though after cleaning up those links and there's nothing in it to, to really defend Jadon. so i actually kind of feel like he should know this was coming and kind of had prepped against this but he didn't really have anything maybe just to preemptively drill the drones back and forth and keep the vultures in the choke for a little bit buy some more time for some links to finish but i think that even then he'd be able to defend this i think it's a real sloppy play from jadong here not having enough you know, sim city set up in the natural expansion with the links buffering to keep those vultures in range of the song as they run in oh my gosh this is brutal guys this is this is a dead zerg we're looking at right now he's got a few mutas popping out and he's got total what eight drones seven drone unreal this is such a uh just a bop here by rush rush has completely destroyed the mineral line and yeah all we needed was some buildings we just needed some buildings in the way of this it's pretty clear what was going on some sort of drop or run by you have to prepare for both and you know jadong didn't really prepare for either here he's just building muta kind of on autopilot with one sunken colony and a few links to defend that's just not enough, and Rush is going to punish here. Well, he might be able to get the like the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie getting picked off is kind of a big deal here. He's going to be able to snipe a few yeah. SCVs, but no, not good enough. Jadong just going to tap out. Damn! Rush on a spree right now. Jadong really not respecting that play. It's a bit disappointing, honestly, to say the least. Maybe we should have seen... Like, what one One huge thing that could have been changed there, right? Why not place the third hatchery at the natural? Why do why do we not use that as well, a bit yeah, of a block? Oh yeah, absolutely. But he's worried about tank. It's because he's worried. It's because he's worried about tank push. He's, mm. he, he's worried about tank push, and he wants to place the highest tech. That's all it comes down to. He's just trying to be too greedy of the situation. Like he's thinking too. He's like thinking like three steps ahead, while Rush is like thinking just like one or two steps ahead, and like Jadon's outplaying himself. Mm. That's that's unfortunate, man. That's a really rough way to go down. Definitely, that's happened to me before on the ladder as well, getting that run by. But you only have to you only have to lose to that a few times before you realize we need buildings at the front to block that. And unfortunately, Jadong not making that uh, that update, that change, that uh, reaction to the build from Rush, and he gets taken out. And already, guys, we're down to just two Zergs left. Of course, we do have that crazy revive in the back pocket. I think Queen Hero could be feeling a lot of pressure now, though. One of them's going to have to be sent out to try and take down Rush. That's coming out next. Here we go. Rush versus Queen on Dark Origin. Queen, the butt of every joke recently, man. I've been feeling really bad for this guy. I don't. I don't feel bad for him at all, Sen. He needs to perform better. Like, if, if you show up as a bricklayer and you can't build a wall properly, I'm not going to be impressed with you. <laughs> but you built so many great walls in the past. <laughs> and, uh, I don't care. I want a good wall a, now. A like, good wall yesterday doesn't help me today, Sam. <laughs> well, I mean, he is number four on the ladder right now. He has been putting out some good games here and there, but it's really been inconsistent. I definitely agree with you in that. And uh, we expect a lot more from the two-time ASL champion. It's unfortunate that he does seem to be falling off, but a lot of it can be mental as well, right? If you if you don't get into the ASL and everyone's making fun of you, everyone's you know clowning on you, and the expectation is there that you're falling off, uh, it, that can affect you seriously mentally. And I hope that you know Queen finds a way out of that. He finds a way to bring himself back to you know a good state once again.
Yeah, right now, Queen is like Eminem in 8 Mile, where he's like choking on stage, he's in the bathroom, in the back room, he's like trying to get his shit together right now, saying he's like having a heart attack, he's like, oh my god, like, Action and Jadong are already out, I'm against these guys right now, I need to play good, I hope they don't revive me, like, he's, all kinds of craziness is rushing through this matriarch's mind right now, I hope he can establish some kind of feminine divinity or something, some kind of solace in this dark moment to light up this abyss that he's going to be in and trying to claw his way out of soon. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tough thing to do, man. It is really tough to turn around your mentality to like focus up in these hard times, but I, uh, I've got high hopes here for Queen. He started out with a very normal build here. He's going to be throwing down, I think, a uh, third hatch he's gonna have that 2.5 hatch coming pretty soon and he sees everything that's coming from Mirage. he's got a good view here over the natural this is not a great map in my opinion for zerg versus terran like Z zvt is rough right. on this map there's so many different things mm -hmm. abusive things that the terran player can do to you know get in there and deal damage there's that weird like back entrance that you can do all sorts of proxies and all kinds of funky things back there to uh, throw off the Zerg player. And, the, you know, the rush distance really isn't that far. He's managed to sneak out a few uh, Marine forces. I don't know if that's actually been spotted by Queen, but he should have, like, oh, you know, a couple of uh, pairs of links here being made, hopefully, to be able to stop this. If he sees drones popping, he's just going to come in. No, he sees links popping, so he does send the Marines back home. And Queen going to be safe for now. He can breathe, breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, but he's gonna overmake Lings, I think. Or is he not? Okay, I'm impressed. If he didn't overmake Lings right now, I'm really impressed. Seems like he's not overmaking. Oh, I'm really impressed. Okay, okay. I mean, he needs to send a yeah, Ling out here to okay. see if this is coming, right? Like he's he's just revealing the exact yeah. number of Lings to this SCV here, and he's not getting a scout on where exactly these Marines are. It's a little bit rough for rough for him right now. I should, I should, I yeah, I actually take back what I said immediately. I'm not impressed at all. He just got, he lucked out so much right now because if, if Rush had committed to that, well, the SCV saw the links distracted, he could have come onto the natural, kill one or two drones and delay mining time and it would have been a nightmare situation. The only thing that, the only reason Rush didn't do that is because link speed was on the way and he didn't want to risk losing this bio because he wants to maintain a healthy game state going into the mid game. He didn't want to do anything unorthodox that's going to throw him off the rails right now. He wants to stay nice and safe and in control of the game and don't want to take any gambles, which I can respect as well. Well, Queen's gone for that 2.5 hatch. Things are maybe a little bit slowed down here. I, I think because of the number of links that had to be produced. But uh, he should still be okay here to get his Mutas out around 6 minutes. With that like 7-8 Mutalist count popping right away. Um, we'll see what he can do with the... Uh, uh, with the links here while the marines are moving across the map i i don't think he can get any damage here with that uh, wall in and two sunken colonies are going to come up back at home but that's a little bit slow rush might just hit the gas here hit the stim button and try to run in but uh you know harassing from behind is actually going to buy a little bit of time i guess rush not going to uh, go for that sort of high risk high reward play Instead, just going to kind of back off here. Comfortable, happy with the two sunkens that were made. And kind of the uh, effect that that's going to have on Queen's later mutalist production. Nice snipe there. But Queen here, he's going to have to do something with these mutas. And Rush is pre preparing for that back at home. Yeah, it's, it's not possible to break that depot and the SAV repair cycle unless you've got at least six slings and the Terran is slightly slow in sending the SAVs to repair. In that case, you can break through the depot, but you need at least six slings. He had five, so there's no way he's ever breaking through that, maybe forcing a little bit of repair bill. But yeah, if he had like maybe eight links there, he could have a way of breaking that open, but I'm not going to say anything crazy. Instead, there's a little pin somebody from the right-hand side, though, going to be trying to come in. These Marines are on low HP, and now Queen going to come in and clean up this little bio ball pretty efficiently as well, I might add suddenly getting a little bit of control in this game is queen yeah that was pretty decent you know coming across that bridge is always a hard thing and having the links right there at the time as they were crossing the bridge just to do a little bit of blocking to make things a little bit hard for rush to micro and coming in with the mutas at the same time it was a very nice move and now rush doesn't have that army to to deal with these mutas he has to produce a lot of turrets here in order to hold on to his main and natural it's uh it's a bad situation right now for 
Rush and Queen has a lot of opportunities right now. He's got basically all the options right now. He can keep producing mutas and try to push the issue, or he can just switch into full-on macro production, and I think that's what he's doing right now, adding on a bunch of drones, uh, saving up some gas, you know, throwing down some tech buildings and his third base. We're probably going to see a Hydralis Defiler transition from here, don't you think? Well, we, we, we absolutely will, I think, so. and I'm really loving the gameplay from Queen right now. He's not only coming in here and doing economic damage, but he's really selling to Rush that this is a much bigger commitment than it actually is. Rush is probably imagining that he's going to be going up to like 11 mutas at the bare minimum over and over again, maybe even making more than 11 mutas at a time. So that means that Rush has like made a few more turrets and he's been a little bit more defensive than maybe he'd like to be uh, going forward here. As we see quite a lot of turrets in the maybe a total of five turrets in the main and he did have a total of five in the natural at one point in time as well. So really has been treating this like it could have been like a, a, an all-in muta play just to be extra safe and that's going to really slow down the curve for him going forward now that queen is a lot more optimized not making that many mews instead just power droning back at home ready to saturate this third soon that bunker has nothing in it he could target that down and then open a position to start dealing damage to those two supply depots but he's actually going to back off for now actually losing control and information about where that marine medic group is i think the marine medic sliding out on the right hand side he's just sending mutas everywhere to try and figure out where that went and that's actually going to slow down his harassment here that's bought rush some time he's going to have his science vessels out here pretty soon but queen will be getting into his macro now his third gas is just about online here he's going to utilize these last few mutas as a last group of 11 i don't think he's going to produce much more than that as he transitions here into the defiler and uh, lurker play yeah, Rush is uh, uh, speeding uh, with quite a lot of acceleration here. Excuse me as I try to avoid too many Rush puns towards really fast vessel tech. So we're going to be having this like 10 minute vessel timing, which is actually a really big deal because it gives you a window pre-defiler usually, unless Queen has got a very early hive. There's a nice big window here for Rush to exploit before defilers are made. He can come in here. It's not that easy to defend this third base. It's not like a ramp where you can just kind of put some lurkers on the high ground and you know bob's your uncle not kind of that type of deal you know you got this ramp on the left to think about the three bridges that turn across but queen so far doing a great job of just dogging this bible over and over again despite having this early plus one upgrade to fight with not really trading that well with queen's mutas is a rush which is actually kind of surprising considering the low amount of mutas that have been made this game here we go we have the lurkers morphing in here it's time to start to set these up start to set up these defensive positions and the initiative will be changed over towards rush now he'll have the pressure on the map here to start to force queen into some awkward positions where up until this point it's really been queen all over rush his side of the map you know dealing that economic damage slowing him down killing off his marines now rush really has full control here of the map he'll be able to potentially take a third he'll be able to uh, push these mutilists away maybe with their radiate coming up here soon uh, come across the map try to you know irradiate a bunch of lurkers maybe open up a position where he can get in and deal some damage but looks like one marine here gonna get one drone not too bad Picking off one drone there is uh, is pretty decent here for Rush, and he gets a good view of the defensive uh, setup here from Queen on that side of the map. And uh, where is he actually going to go with this first army? Wherever he decides to attack, is it's going to be a pretty big deal here. Will he go across the bridges, or will he come over the, um, from the left-hand side from the high ground? It looks like he's going to come to the bridges, and with just two irradiates, it's going to be really important where he spends them right now. Ooh. Yeah, he needs to be really careful. He needs to keep this big Bible in a nice tight square formation, which is very difficult to do with this quantity of Marines. There's so many control groups to manage. He needs to be careful not to lose this vessel as well. To the Sharking Scourge waiting in the wings to strike now as he starts to progress across this first bridge. He's going to be targeting down one of these lurkers very quickly. He goes on the first. Three lurkers have already bitten the dust. This other lurker is going to go falling shorter. These other three lurkers on the northeast side not going to be providing much support, allowing these Marines to cross this bridge more or less unchallenged right now and 11 mutas not really getting the value they maybe could as well could be finally coming in here to clean it up with some lurker link helping this mutas list force finally dealing with radiate coming down on that muta clump to help finish it off and he's not even trying to split right now there's only four mutas left so they're going to die as well in short they're now rush looking very strong and able to take queen out of this game oh, insane i think he's killed him he's just done it he's done it here 
just a small mistake from Queen. They're not being in position to prevent the Marines from running across one of the three bridges. It's very hard to defend on this map. And, you know, Rush has done a fantastic job of ripping him open. And there it is. Queen loses Crazy. his third. He's got a pretty decent bank here with some uh, gas just being spent now. Uh, but he, he, you know, he has enough money to build, rebuild this hatch, but that's not really the issue here. The issue is the loss of that gas mining for quite some time. It's going to be such a hard slug here for Queen to try and bring himself back into this game. A slog, excuse me, to get himself back into this. He needs, like, amazing plagues. Some uh, lurkers managing to get across the map with some defilers to get into a good position here. I don't even know if he has plague yet. He's going to try and run forward and, you know, desperate counterattack right now to get some damage. He's even trying to use the defilers that have been irradiated to deal some damage. But, I mean, back at home, Rush is just going to run around this and cut off any reinforcement to this uh, defiler push. He's going to move around the left-hand side. Desperation moves here from Queen, but Rush is shoving forward. He's going to get right up here in towards this natural and start irradiating everything that pops out from Queen. And... With the irradiates constantly coming down on Queen's army, there's almost nothing he can do. He's just going to keep losing gas way faster than he can replenish those gas units. He's going to be losing them over and over and over again. And it's just Rush's game to lose at this point. He is so far ahead. All he needs to do is just keep control of this game. Meanwhile, Rush is just multiplying the vessel count right now. There's not really a lot of efforts being made to deal with those, apart from a plague that just went down on two of them, which is a pretty good connection. There's no link counterattack in the third of uh, Rush here, but going to be quickly thwarted by the fire bat and marine support there. So kind of Rush dotting his eyes and uh, crossing his T's here, not letting any kind of counter pressure really phase him while he maintains this main, this big, strong map control dominance that we see here in the center, really limiting the options of Queen. I really understand why Queen was trying to be so greedy with his army positioning he was trying to like bait rush in to punish and try and kill the bio as well as defend whereas he should have been trying to buy for time hold the ramps for another 30 seconds like having the lurkers positioned in advance and just slow them slow the advance of the tearing down force him to go around to left hand side at the very least and he would have had defilers out in time had he done that he's really kind of misread the situation trying to get a little bit too much value out of his uh, game for state and now he's going to pay the price for it as these one more marines finally start stimming and sniping uh, a vessel there is queen but it's not, I don't think it'll be enough this time. Oh, Queen leaving the same hole open as he lost to earlier. And wow. he does have one more lurker moving over here to the left-hand side, but it looks like Rush can break this. No, he is going to back away. So Queen doing a little bit of a better job here defending this position. Now with those defilers, as you said, able to hold the third base, but drops coming into the back of the main. This is going to be deadly here. We, here. we are going to run rampant in this main here. Rush dropping out his marine medic and nothing to challenge this except for a few straggling lings coming into the main trying to hold on. It's not going to be enough, I think. It's barely cleaning up right now, but with the marines and medics kind of on top of each other, he's even going to pull the drones to try and fight here while coming into the natural, spamming out those irradiates. It's a numbers game at this point, and Queen is losing it. He gives up. He taps out Rush. Victorious again. He's on a triple kill win streak right now this is crazy how can Terran pull this out right now after being an absolute flat line for the entirety of the season rush just crushing zerg face right now there, we only have a hero left he's the last man standing trinity of insanity Jin, we need a hero right now man we need a hero to bring back the zerg lineup we've been devastated so far with three players eliminated already, only one man remains. Just come on, hero. Can you do it? Can he pull out the reverse sweep here? That would be insane. But at the same time, Rush has the ability to potentially take that all kill prize. Actually, does he does he get the all kill prize? I think he gets the all kill prize already. He's taken out three in a row. Um no, that's actually with the reverse sweep. So Rush needs to kill one more player here. If he takes out here right now, he will get right. that 1,400,000 one. And that's a nice little moolah, you know? It's a little tasty cheese stack there to wrap his lips around. I'm sure he'll be a hungry boy and looking at that. 
with a bated breath as he goes forward in this game on retro going to be walling in and getting the advantage of having this wall in so he can like you know min max his build even more make less marines if he so desires and then maybe even like do some kind of crazy five racks plus one or some other kind of build that might be able to dismantle hero's powerful um, mid-game macro here i cringe to imagine what uh, the other zerg players are saying to queen right now in the chat i'm sure that he is uh <laughs> he's hurting right now from all the uh the abuse should be. coming his way that be. was that was a rough game that last one and all the uh the weight of the zerg race is now on the shoulders of hero and you know he's just shrugging it off right now trying to get into his game here with the 12 hatch coming out gonna play it very normally uh to start and we'll see if he can in a normal game take down run she's just on fire today the hero is not necessarily the hero that the zerg race deserves right now but it's certainly the hero that we need right now so i'm hoping he can turn it around there is still a lifeline in that back pocket they're just going to be taking a bench maybe and reviving hero for the majority of this series give him two lives two goes at it trying to take down this powerhouse of a terran lineup the only questionable choice is sharp and even sharp's playing on fire recently there's nothing wrong with this terran lineup right now it's gonna be an uphill battle that will say and he's sisyphus right now trying to push this boulder up this hill i hope you can figure out a way of enjoying it he is going to go ahead and grab a very quick third base here. So third base before that gas geyser. This is the three hatch style with the third hatch at another base. It's hard to hold on because you do need to put a lot of sunken colonies down to avoid losing your third or your natural uh, to a two racks play. He was really trying to prevent Rush from getting into the main uh, and seeing that gas timing. Uh, but he did end up seeing that. So I think we're going to see that two racks play come out. And that's going to force those sunkins out. Everything's going to kind of cascade from there. We'll see if Euro can hold on to this. Um, and, you know, still get into a good game. But that was a little bit uh, disappointing there for him, I think. Just allowing that SCV in is really painful right now. Yeah, and any free information that the, the Terran player is going to be able to glean here from the Zerg is actually going to hurt the Zerg a lot. It's not so much that the Zerg might be punished, which actually might still transpire, but it's more so that now the Terran player at the very least knows exactly what he needs to do to put himself into the most advantageous position going forward into this uh, early to mid game phase. And the Zerg needs everything in their arsenal to protect against that. One of the advantages of Zerg uh, uh, is that maybe you can shut down this uh, scouting sometime, whereas you Usually the Terran player has a very easy time scouting you early game because the SCV scouts were also then going into those fast comsats with like this you know, fast map hack ability that Terran players kind of have. And that can kind of really allow the Terran player to abuse the game states and really know exactly what tools are needed and when and what order and sequencing to really take advantage and abuse these uh, transitional points of weakness that the Zerg player have in their tech. And you know that Rush is no... Uh, stranger to abusing Zerg players. He's been doing it all day today. He's been abusing the heck out of this lineup and now preparing to abuse the three hatch play of Hero. I really like this play from Hero. I really wish he would have been able to keep the, uh, the SCV from scouting there, but now we're going to see how he uh, plays even when it has been scouted. When Rush is ready to punish, he's looking for that punish. How is Hero going to play to to react to that and to uh, to handle that? It looks like playing it out very normally here. This is the build that I learned from uh, watching Larva games. You go ahead and throw down three sunken colonies at the natural, two sunken colonies at the third, and that's after right. after you get all those sunken colonies out is when you start to add on your gases, your second gas and your third gas come after all the sunken colonies have been completed. Yeah, this is a great build for maps like Neo Sylphid as well, and it works pretty good on uh, Retro, especially with this this particular base here that we have on the 9 o'clock. It's actually probably one of the easier ones to defend with Sunkins in terms of like not being too big of a deal that the ramps are coming from different angles. So it's kind of a good idea to do it from this map positioning maybe as well. Could it be going straight into Thorax is Rush? Okay, he, he, wants to, he wants to try and put the hurt on um, Hero here. Maybe try and find a timing where he can just break these Sunkins with a critical mass of bio. And it's possible that um hero will be like kind of like misguided in just how many sunkens he needs and at what timing but okay he's gonna be that five racks plus one i was thinking about in the early game saying 
Five racks plus one gives you a huge, huge advantage in the army count. But Hero, I think he can hold on to this, man. I think that he could do this. He, the thing that really worries you uh, when you're doing this type of play is like a tank push. I feel like tank push, something like a fantasy rush with Valkyrie is really, really scary here because you're relying on your mutas right. to take back some map control, to deal some damage while you're waiting for your Hydra. Uh, and you know, Defiler to start to come out to to kind of save you from a push like that. But if he just builds a lot of sunken and harasses with his mutas and gets into his hive here, I, I think he should be okay. Yeah, I think he'd probably be okay as well. Uh, I'd like to quickly point out, we have a moment, that he built his Queen's Nest outside of the Sunken Wall. That's just to like, split up the, the Marine focus. So they have to either kill it first or like sacrifice surface area on the Sunken. So they have to go deeper in to kill them, reducing their overall DPS and also uh, maybe thinning out the overall Marine crowd as they're running in deeper to try and get their shots off. does allow for Sunkens to get a little bit of damage there before the Marines start to do uh, deal out their target firing and start to pick those off one at a time. So can help you and get... Uh, not getting busted too easily by having this like sim city of the, the queen's nest out in front like this this is a critical moment here we're seeing right now hero kind of sharking around these marines here he does need to get inside the main base and see exactly what's coming maybe seeing the number of marines that are out right now might you know tip him off here but he should he should know he needs a lot of sunken colonies right now he needs he needs like two more at least right. maybe three more sunken colonies in his natural yeah. To hold on he is going to start those now but it's a little bit late actually and he might die uh, this is this is just how uh, this matchup functions is if you don't have the right number of sunkens at the right time you can just die here we go hitting that stim button pretty good micro so far from hero and the queen's nest is kind of dividing him up a little bit it's making things a little hard but i think that he can break through here it's really really close those two sunken colonies finishing up he will hold oh my gosh a great hold here from hero just barely hanging on in his natural yeah just six muters remaining one clinging on to life and absolute red hp as you can get just so dark against the background on that ui just see how close uh hero there was being broken just clinging on He's, he's dangling off the cliff with his fingertips saying and just like what's crazy about it is he didn't seem too bothered by either he's not he's just dangling off the cliff about to fall to his death he's wiggling his feet around and having a little bit of a jiggle and having a good time of it and actually like stabilizing in a really effective way to file a mount pre nine minutes as well so he's got a really strong timing as well so I don't think Rush maybe can actually get something done here. I think Hero is starting to, to, to be Sisyphus, but he's enjoying it, saying he's starting to like pushing this boulder up the hill, and he's going to get used to it. Well, this was the timing that Rush was looking for with that five racks plays. I'm going to break you before Defiler, and now we are uh, at that Defiler tech with Lurker coming up here. With Lurker, five racks just does not do anything. If you get that those early Lurkers out, mm. it, it's it's really quite useless. So uh, he is going to have to transition here. He will have to go into plan B. It's going to be dropship. Two dropship right off the bat. You rarely ever see this against a Mutalist player. Going for drops wow. this fast. And Hero is ready. He is ready for this. He's got perfect overlord coverage on his side of the map maybe rush can sneak around the top side of the map potentially get over here to the third base yeah that's where he's gonna go here this is the only way he can get in right now because hero has vision everywhere else let's see if hero picks up on this and what kind of damage the the drop can do here over at the third we don't have much defense over there we are gonna have an uh, a uh, nidus canal coming up here pretty soon though yeah, he's gonna go for the shamble gamble right now. The situation's a complete shambles, and instead Amazing. he's gonna be going for these a uh, little bit of a gamble. He's got two pairs of scope. Gonna be scanning ahead of time is Rush. Beautiful scan there. Not gonna be taking those drop ships out is, uh, from Hero, and that that will also give a little bit of lifeline into him. Maybe he can distract Hero and find another way of getting some value out of those two drop ships. It is possible, but I'm not liking his chances so far. They are gonna be swinging around to this third base. There is only one pair of scourge up here. 
here. So it's possible to get at least some unload here and do some damage to the economy of Hero, who's currently distracted out on the map against his Bioforce, currently advancing on his position in the natural expansion. But the Overlord sees the incoming drop ships, and Rush is kind of getting cold feet right now. He doesn't really want to commit to this. He's already made the gamble in going for the drop ships anyway, and now if he does lose them for free, like all of his chances in this game just go out the window pretty much. The longer you don't see any science vessels with this army, the, the more you are confirming that there is some sort of drop on the right. way. And I think the hero kind of figured that out very early on here. He is going to come in, get some irradiates down, but hero just perfect defense thus far. Rush really falling by the wayside with these drops, not able to get anything done with them. He's going to just hide them up in the top left, maybe hope that once a game state, you know, occurs where... Things are really, really crazy and really, really out there. Maybe he can slip in with with those two drops and get some damage. But look at this. Hero sending Ling up to the top left. He's going to spot the drops. Oh, my God. He sees oh, it. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. We're in trouble now. Like, Rush, Rush's win percent just plummeted. Like, the only thing he had was, like, the fact that there was no real confirmation on exactly where the dropships would be. He knew he knew that the dropships were probably out there somewhere and were a likelihood, but now that he's, like, confirmed them, knows exactly where they are, he'll have, you better keep, keep track of them from now on. He's got enough defilers out that one irradiates, not going to come in here and just, like, clean up the day. He can still have enough energy provided to him. He's even going to consume that defiler that was irradiated to try and be even more econ economical with the, the value here and try and have enough setup here that just rush will never be able to break him if he can just keep defiler producing if you have one defiler out and one defiler producing at all times it's almost impossible almost impossible for the terran to break you unless they can maintain the siege for one to two minutes minimum and that's really hard to do so i really don't like your brush's chances here Rush is just going to hold this high ground over here and make sure that Hero can't take a fourth base for free. Nice plague. Oh, my goodness. That plague is insane. Wow. And it's so good in a game state like this when you've got these mutas still alive and there's potential for hydrogen. Oh, he's going to ultra here. He needs a fourth gas then. He needs to actually secure a fourth gas. I really expected to see him go into uh, Hydro's Defiler, actually, but... Going for Ultra here seems a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy, you know, it's, it's going to be very hard to get into that. Yeah, he's got quite a lot of gas banked up, though, Saiyan, so he can mm. quite quickly get, you know, six or so Ultras out and have a little power spike. Maybe it's not so much that he can support the Ultras as much as he wants a little power spike, a, a tempo shift here, if you will, to kind of come out onto the map in a big way with six Ultras, plenty of Cracklings, and a Phyla support might be the kind of tempo shift he needs to start to come out here and really put the hurt on Rush and get the Defilers across the map to start hitting these key locations, uh, maybe at three o'clock or the natural. Yeah, maybe he can get out and clear this marine medic force in the middle of the map and then secure a base. I think that's what he's looking for. He's trying constantly to send drones out all over the map, just looking for a location. But look at that bank he's got now. 1,700, 1,500. He's going to drop like 10 ultra or something like that. It's going to be crazy all the ultras he's going to pop out here in a moment. And Rush doesn't have any idea about this game state. Because of the ebb and flow of the game, it's really difficult to dial in exactly how much the gas of the Zerg has been utilized. It's very difficult for him to figure out that there's a 2,000 gas bank right now. Like, he might be figuring there's something. Like, he might be figuring it anywhere between 500 and 1,000, sure. But there's no way he's oh. anticipating a 2,000, 2,000 bank right now. He's going to be killing no. these drones coming up to the northwest quadrant, though. But it's not really going to matter. Like, he doesn't really need any more bases. He has enough to just build an army of ultras like almost a whole control group of ultras that are going to be pretty well upgraded as well and that's going to put action in the driver's seat the only thing going for rush right now is this big vessel fleet that hasn't been dealt with he did get a plague off on four of the vessels but he hasn't killed them with the mutas yet no the mutas all got picked off earlier as well they got irradiated down and marines picked off the remainder of them so maybe he needs to make another muta here coming up but he's been just saving this gas for so long i think he wants to put everything into those ultras and come out with that huge power spike like you were saying these lings getting over here is actually kind of a big deal lings actually making their way over and actually picking off quite a few of the reinforcing units there's that one muta we were talking about that maybe could pick off some vessels here if rush gets a little bit sloppy but he's actually he's gonna shut down the mining for a moment looks like we will have those marines and medics making their way to the front there's the ultra power spike that we were talking about look at the gas bank has just disappeared oh no so many irradiates going down right now the vessel count just has not been reduced at all and there's so many 
Irradiate's going down on this. This is terrible for Gear right now. His power spike is being completely destroyed right now. Yeah, the cow's going to be disappearing down the burrow to try and pop up at the other farm. Make sure they don't catch any of that surplus gas from the methane they've been ejecting from so much grass they've consumed over the years. But now, exploding onto the map from the southern flank, catching some of those vessels as well. It's a big win, actually. Some of those vessels are already softened up from the other Scourge connectors. Going to be dealing with most of those as well. 4-1 upgraded on these Ultras. They are pretty potent, but Rush has done a great job of targeting, firing those Ultras down. Has a somewhat sizable bioforce, just enough critical mass to start killing these ultras in a timely manner and with the irradiates kind of softening those up as well going to be getting some control back from uh um, at, from hero going forward but the only issue is is that rush needs to be able to come up here and stop these two bases coming online in the, the northwest because this is the only way hero is going to win this game it's if he gets like back into like a big a big gas advantage having these extra gas there's another 600 gas a minute coming in for him rush does have this northeast base going up here doesn't quite have the gas mining yet but he will be having a pretty strong the macro here maybe a 10 10 barracks worth of production and three star ports he could also go for three factory tank here i don't think he will i think he'll be more likely to go into bc here to really get on top of the gas mining of the zerg to try and win it with that kind of win condition yeah there's a, a really good position to take as the the terran player with bcs over here at the center left right over top of the natural you can hit both gases you can hit the gas at the third and the gas at the natural uh from that position and it's really really hard to dislodge uh, the BCs from that spot. So we'll see if Rush utilizes that. How is he going to utilize this? Oh, I think he's got a drop in the top left, actually. We do see a bunch of Marines. Oh, they weren't a drop. I th or maybe they were. Okay, I see a uh, blue dot flying away. Maybe that was a drop. It's a pretty good move here, but Ultra clears up drops like nothing else. It really does clear it up very, very good. Very, very well. But more Marines are going to be headed up to that top left, and I think Hero might lose this base, man. It looks like he's probably going to end up uh, losing this game. If he loses both these bases, Rush is going to eventually starve him out here. Things are not looking good right now for Hero. Oh, actions. Oh, so Hero's made a big tactical error here. He tried to cut corners. He didn't start his plus three carapace. He was trying to banking on that big power spike with the 4-1 Ultralisks. He had to stomp out the Terran that was currently on 2-1. But Rush had a really strong, crisp um, upgrade timing. So now he's on 3-2 against 4-1 and is able to very comfortably deal with this forces of Hero that should be overwhelming him. But because of the slower upgrade timing due to trying to be a little bit greedy and cut corners and skipping that, now he's paying the price. Yeah, he's paying the price here. Ultras are tearing through some of these Marines in the middle of the map. And Rush is going to have to pull back here with a lot of his forces. That might open up in a location where maybe Hero can get, you know, some units uh, or get get a base potentially up in the top left. But look at that. We've even got a uh, kind of a contingent of Marine forces over there at the top left denying any bases coming up. Hero is drying out, man. We're at 18, 19 minutes in. He's not quite out of the gas at his main and natural, but it's getting close. He's pushing in with the Defiler, trying to make a play here, trying to make a run by into the natural and really make things frustrating for Rush to deal with. But as long as Rush can irradiate out these Defilers and slow everything down, he should be able to take this game uh, no problem here. Rush even going to pull that Marine Force back from the top of the ramp over there at the top left. He's going to bring this over here to try and hold his main base. Defiler does finally go down. We've got a Lurker here as well, but I think that's been irradiated uh, also. And Hero, this desperate counterattack in the natural, I don't think it's done enough. It certainly hasn't allowed him to get a fourth base up. Yeah, I mean, one thing going for Hero is just a few moments ago before this onslaught we just saw, he did get his plus three carapace finally, so he's now got five one ultras. They're, they're not too much to sneeze at, but the problem is he's only got plus one Kaiser Blades upgrade, which means the, the ultras can't two-shot the marines right now, so they're not trading that effectively. And the, the, the marines are tanking so much more shots from the ultras that the Zerg will never be able to deal with the critical mass of bio without having a positional uh, or game state advantage. And that's going to be a little bit of an issue here for Hero, because Star Cross game of trading and if you're not able to trade well eventually you might just lose based on numbers alone so and this big 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 bunker formation from rush looks so daunting like, unless you've got swarm you're not going to really break that efficiently he has got enough ultras to tank the damage but if there's even like one or two fire bats in here oh i'm gonna be so impressed by rush there's a fire bat in here dude this bunker these bunkers are like they, they're so brutal right now trying to get through them 
We don't have too many SCVs being pulled right now. Maybe he can actually crush this. Wow. Those bunkers went down insanely fast without the repair. He breaks through this position really, really quickly. No fire bats in there either, like you said. And here we go. The, uh, one defiler is actually going to get by here maybe into the natural all of the vessels got sent up to the top right to deal with that army and the defiler is going to make its way over here to the natural maybe hero can get on top of the production here there it is it gets irradiated that's unfortunate he will not be able to get a good uh, dark storm here just right outside the natural perfectly done by here uh, rush but another one making its way up here and we've got scourge to kind of ward away those vessels it's just right on the edge here and hero he's running out of minerals no or gas we are now at 21 minutes 21 minutes is the cutoff point where that's uh the, the main and natural will start to run out of that gas guy uh gas mining so he is on the very cusp here of running out of everything where's the plague he doesn't have the plague there's no plague here dark swarm instead is going to be thrown down he's trying to make this last desperate push in towards this natural but rush is getting his bases online once again over here in the top right and hero is just about mined out he's trying to grab one base at the bottom center it's a desperation base but that's the only one he can even think to take and look like rush just found out about it he's going to kill that off no problem Rush playing pretty flawlessly in this game. There's a few tactical issues. Maybe you could argue he should have had fire bats to those bunkers, but he has done a great job of setting up these bases to make it as hard for Hero to break as possible and forcing him to commit so many of his units to these attacks and not really able to sustain this, this threat out on the map with this pitiful economy that he's got. Now that he's starting to become mined out, he's mined out in his main. The natural will be mined out in short order. It's not even mining at full efficiency anymore. It's a real tough situation for Hero. He's not even going to get this expansion up in the top left desperation from the hero right now he's not necessarily the hero we deserved or needed i don't think i'm not even <laughs> sure they're going to revive him his own oh man i mean, he's had the best game so far he's had the best chances here but i don't True. know it's it's crazy to think that rush has just dominated every single zerg player that we have in this lineup look at how many slices it takes for these kaiser blades to take out the marines right now they just don't have the 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 damage that they need and he's gonna finally uh, pop out some fire bats over in the top right so even the uh the ling attack here is not going to be enough it looks like okay he does take out the fire bat and he does have the dark swarm here still so lings are getting some kills but oh man their radiates in the natural are brutal and we're gonna have a an eraser trick here this is so much damage hero is being pushed out of this game now everything has gone wrong and yeah, Rush is just moments away from clearing this out. Look at all this. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is crazy. Even the Ultra coming in. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just insult to injury, saying. Even the Ultra cling some drones and then the vessel's getting cleaned up uh, by the Scourge finally, but too little, too late. Gonna be tapping out is Hero. Rush has done it. He's got the prize pool. Hasn't quite finished the job, though. One of these Zerg players is gonna be coming back to life in just a second, kind of like Everessence, bring me to life. I mean, I, I don't think I need anything to bring me to life right now. So I'm on the edge of my seat, excited to see if, if Rush is going to take this next revived uh, Zerg player out as well. Who will be revived? I imagine it's going to be Hero. Man, if you told me that Rush was going to all kill this entire group after watching the performance of Terran this entire season, I would have called you completely insane. But there it is. Rush just destroys all of these zerg players like it was nothing everyone except for hero didn't even stand a chance i mean hero he had some chances there he had some good ideas but rush just dominating throughout this week so far this this is this is crazy to me this this is just insanity i'm uh i'm blown away by rush's performance and i, I guess we're gonna see a hero revive but Love to find out it's coming right up hero gonna be the revived player here not a big surprise what are your predictions for this match here Jun, what do you think is gonna happen uh Rush is going to bowl him over. He can't even go for the same kind of build as the last game. He can't do an on-base third. Too, too uh, at risk of losing to the 2 rex timing of Rush being punished. So he does have the advantage of slowing down pushes on this like catwalk here with lurkers. But the issue is the, the potential of a, a tank push here from Rush. If he sees that there's, there's not a very timely Queen's Nest coming out from here, that's probably going to trigger a tank push response. And I don't imagine he, uh, Rush is going to fail in executing a tank push here. I, I feel like the momentum that 
that he's got right now, how he's feeling, the, sh the, the absolute like utter euphoria that must be uh, felt by this man right now. I'm kind of envious. I mean, I definitely agree. It's got to feel amazing to all kill this lineup right now. This is a lot of the best Zerg players that we have in the world here. Uh, definitely hero and action fit that bill. Queen falling apart a little bit recently. He might be just mentally not quite there. Jadong uh, hasn't been at that very pinnacle of play for a little while now. But um, he's got to be feeling amazing here taking out all th this squad of players and taking home that 1,400,000 won. Just insane, his performance here. Let's just, let's talk about that last game. What did Hero do wrong? I feel like, uh, you know, not getting the kills on those vessels really dampened his Ultralist right. timing. And, you know, getting it hit by that many Irradiates right as all the Ultras were popping out. He also, uh, you know, got hit by the Irradiates and then he attacked with like half of his Ultra with while the other half were just on hold position. Uh, over at the top side of the map so it really felt like things weren't really put together properly with that timing that he had and it, you know rush was just able to pull it apart pretty well with the number of vessels that he'd been able to to accumulate throughout that game yeah essentially he was only able to leverage two-thirds of his gas at timing where it was very critical that he hit him with everything that he had on ironically he did he did a slightly delayed uh, upgrade timing he didn't start his plus three carapace right away he kind of skipped out on it and waited to just pumped out ultras and then like made it as a bit of an afterthought to slowly catch up he did eventually catch up but he only had plus one melee as well which means his kaiser blades were not chewing through those marines nearly fast enough killing them in three shots instead of two which is a bit of an issue at that stage in the game when you want a big uh value out of your your army and you're just not able to get it because you can't get those trades that you need you can't reduce the critical mass of bio enough that you can actually start to dominate the terran and just start to attack move into him and, and finish the game that way so instead we saw a great play from rush taking that the four bases getting the fourth gas online gave himself the option to go bc's as another win condition whilst also going straight into like 10 racks production and really just like controlling the game state and playing pretty reactively but also pretty exceptionally well at the same time yeah and putting down that many bunkers at your you know fourth base there just making it so hard for the gas starved hero to make uh, any sort of progress like slow you down at all um and just keeping a small group of contingent of bio up in the top left hand corner making sure that no additional bases go down it's just he really played it out brilliantly, beautifully, and Hero here, he's going to have to go for a different game plan. The follow-up, it appears to be some sort of two-hatch play, but it might be a 2.5 hatch here. We'll just have to see. Uh, yeah, if he is going to be a 2.5 hatch, he will see the, the the hatch replaced just after this Spire now, unless he went for 12-12-12, in which he'd have the minerals to probably throw that down really early on if he doesn't make that many links. So... I think he does have the minerals to do it. I just I didn't notice the timing of the pool and the gas to know for sure if he's going to go for that. It does look like he can. I think he might do. Mm. And it looks like to me he's going to go for that 2.5 hatch. And the, the hard part about this map uh, in particular here is the difficulty of holding the third, of course, but also uh, critically not being able to have your overlord over top of the natural to see exactly how many bio units are being produced by rush this is this is a problem that can't be avoided here on this map it's very hard to get that information and you can see that hero has produced quite a few extra links just to kind of help out with that situation to, to kind of make him a little bit more safe here when he can't see exactly what's being produced by rush yeah, basically, there's like a triangle of balance in StarCraft where, so, you know, Terran counters Zerg, Zerg counters Protoss, and Protoss counters Terran. But what's really happening there is it's, it's a scouting situation. It's a scouting dilemma because it's really easy to scout as Terran. It's really hard to scout as Zerg in this matchup, whereas in Zerg versus Protoss, the inverse is true, and the Zerg can scout the Protoss very easily, whereas the Protoss players in the dark in the early game until they get that Corsair scout out. So right now, you see, like, the Terran player able just to scan the base of the Zerg player for free, unless there was a third hatchery uh, built pretty early on and hidden and maybe he could hide his tech there but even in this case we see the timing of this hatchery being placed move a fourth hatchery as well to kind of add a lot more macro potential and also obfuscating that because he might not necessarily scan that for quite some time 
Uh, and one, one thing to note is that Hero is kind of forced to take this base in the bottom left because Rush would just be too strong with a potential two racks timing that you could just come across this catwalk and kill that hatchery for free and have, have a very strong uh, win condition from just doing that alone. So Hero is really scared about that and instead can be taking this bottom left base. So I think we're going to see Hero go for a really quick hive here. He's just adding on a few mutas right now. He, his mutal is timing not that strong. I think Rush is going to be surprised to see only three mutas arriving here and knowing that there must be another base out, there must be a different plan here rather than just like a really strong mutalis timing attack because, uh, you know, this is way less than what should be here with a regular two hatch uh, timing. So Rush is going to be a little bit, uh, you know, questioning what's going on here from here. It's going to be pushing out. This is a this is a right. probing army that's moving out on the map right now is going to say like what do you, what do you got here what what's going on right now uh i want to come out and you know put some pressure on you to actually see what's happening so this this marine force has to be reacted to by hero and what is this reaction going to be is it going to be just mass mass muta and a whole bunch of lings i think it kind of has to be because he can't really defend bottom left well especially with that extra hatchery in the way with just pure sunken he, Build, building a bunch of sunkets down there is really, really hard to defend uh, both the, the, the left side and the right side of that base. Well, providing that Hero didn't overreact there and pumped like pure Ling or something, which it looks like he has and looks like he's produced some of things, but I think he's still droning somewhat in the bottom left at least. So I kind of actually think this is working out for Hero right now. And I would actually have to say that Hero's done a really great job of uh, maintaining the game state with such a few count of Muta. He had only a five Muta, allowed himself to join up a little bit to kind of catch up in the, the curve of the game, but then came in here with uh, enough Mutas to actually scare Rush a little bit and prevent him from being confident enough to actually put on some pressure. And really, you do need to lean on your opponent more and kind of force a response out of him. And you need to keep leaning on him until he does provide that resistance. Then you let back a little bit, sit back, and you do your own thing again. But really, as often as you can, you want to be leaning on your opponent and Rush, and Rush is kind of like negated doing too much of that. And I feel like Hero is getting away with murder a bit. Hero, what is the follow-up here? So far, nothing has been produced. No additional tech has been produced here. Um, I expect we're going to see a Hydralist Defiler play out of him. But, I mean, I was surprised last game when we saw that Ultralist play. Maybe he's going to go for that again. Uh, yeah, it's very possible. I mean, we have a very fast armor upgrade for Rush, by the way. Um, so I think this bio is interestingly. Good. I'm not sure if he. I'm not sure if he anticipated maybe a very fast lurker switch here, or if this is just to like help soak against the mutiling. But he's actually kind of anticipated the what he needs in this game. Um, look, he's gone for armor before uh, weapon mm. saying is what I'm talking about. Um, so he's kind of like had, had a, re a weird take on uh, on how to deal with uh, this mutaling right now. There's a big force wheeling coming in now, sweeping in. There's not enough bio from the low ground coming in to support this. Hero is going to make very short work of this force and has enough mutas left over 11 plus about 10 or so that he could use to finish off the remainder of Rush's forces. And now finally the Zerg with a bit of life in the line going to be able to get this Terran player on the hook and finally a big catch for the Swarm here, Sam. Wow, this is a lot of mutaling that just was just produced here by Hero. I guess that's what the macro hatch in the bottom left-hand corner was for. It's not for like a big Hydralis transition. It's just for a right. ton of extra lings, a ton of Muta being popped out here. And look at that, a thousand gas in the bank right now for Hero wow. as he transitions. He's going to be able to produce a lot of Lurker here to follow this up. And uh, I mean, Rush, he is far away from building any sort of tank. He's got a floating factory here. He's just starting to pump out some units. Uh, uh, this is really, really good for a hero. I don't know if he's going to win right now, but it's it's looking very close to a win at, at the moment. Maybe he can break that bunker with a bunch of links coming up and just end the game right here. We got no uh, turrets covering these barracks, and one of them is going to fall, picking off Marine over and over and over again. This is typically how we see Terran players die here. There's nothing in the bunker. I'm shocked. How is there nothing in the bunker right now? There's nothing in the bunker at all, saying this is devastating. You need to have that bunker filled so you can defend the turrets from Link stabs while you're distracted in your main base. Doesn't have it as well. Even Marine getting glitched on his Breverin, stopping the DPS and also allowing the Links to quickly kill those forces. There is a small blockage with these medics that he doesn't want to commit to because the Links will be funneled. So instead, going to be rotating back into the natural. So you can get some damage there. Not able to do so. So going running out with the tail between the legs now. It does have to be very careful. Links aren't super strong against Terran alone unless you can really 
really catch them with their pants down. And Rush does have enough right now to ward away the threat of Hero, but currently sitting pretty at over 10 supply is Hero, indicative of a very strong lead, is getting that Defile amount as well. If he can maintain the game state and keep Rush pinned in his base like this, eventually the Defile is going to walk across the map and just sign his death warrant with this Dark Swarm saying. Yeah, we need like four bunkers here right now. We need so many bunkers uh, to survive this first push, and then we need a ton of Irradiate to come come out here and stop this Defiler uh, from getting in and, and just ending this game here, and he's not going to have those bunkers, and I don't think he's going to have the follow-up Irradiates either. We're going to drop a couple of Irradiates here on some of these Lurkers, but I mean, this, this is really, really bad here. Hero is just swarming across yeah. the map, sending all of his rallies uh, right here to the front of Rush's base, and he's not going to slow down, man. He's just going to keep this going. He nor should he slow down, Say, and he is also doubling up on these lurkers on the right-hand flank here, making sure there's no ability for Rush to kind of arc his way into a, a, a winning position by killing the lurkers off one or two at a time, while the majority of them weren't firing. And now look at him closing the gates on Rush, setting up for this Defiler play that's currently imminent. Has the, the, the Muters and Scourge there to also keep the vessels pinned back, not wanting to come out and risk sacrificing themselves for the greater good. And they might need to, though, they might need to come out and do a little bit of gambit here, try and find the Defiler as it rises, but it won't really matter. The, the Dark Swarms will go off pretty much no matter what right now, and Hero is just going to close on Rush and close on any hopes of the Terran player getting the absolute all kill and not going to be getting that Penta, but is doing a valiant effort right now, trying to break up these Marine Saiyan, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Is look at this spread of Lurkers, beautiful. It doesn't matter they're not upgraded. They do, take, they do take three shots to kill the Marines due to the early armor upgrade of the Terran player, but now with the Dark Swarm finally active, diving in is Hero to the natural expansion of Rush, who the only thing he's going to do quickly right now is die. GG finally called, and now the Zerg finally with a bit of momentum saying, going into the sixth game. Unreal hero with a really interesting take on this matchup, just massing up a huge amount of Muta and Ling able to crush the forces of the Terran with a follow-up Lurker push, able to get in there, Defiler, Everything on time here for Hero, and a great play by him. A great comeback here for our Zerg race. Can he keep it going, though? There's still an insane lineup to follow I'm behind this. JYJ, Sharp, and Royal chomping at the bit to end this series here. Can Hero bring it back? We're going to find out. It's coming right up. Ah, so glad that we're settling into a longer series here, Hero bringing back the life of the Zerg, the hero that we needed, man. Just like you were saying. Mate, I've, I was just about to say, I've not been happier to be that wrong in my life. I could, uh, dreams are, I, I, was, it was, I was winning no matter what saying. Either I was right or I was getting what I actually wanted. And we're gonna see a little bit of life here as hero, like I said earlier, is the hero that we need. And right now we don't really deserve him. We kind of have faith in him. And that's on me guys. I didn't have a good positive energy. And I kind of let the, 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 the you know, the, the, the Terran ways of my human ape brain misguide me here. And I should have been more in tune with the swarm and connected to the hive mind and see that there is still hope here for our, for the Zerg. And I'm going to consume some biomass, say, and I want to eat some Terran with some nice chili sauce sprinkled all over those those science vessels. I want to gobble them up, soon. I want to see uh, Hero just run through this squad and we get a, a revive on Rush for, you know, the best of three here between these two players. That was an awesome game. We've still got a long way to go before something like that could happen. He's got to get through. Wait. Rush is revived? Hold on a second. Did they just re did they use their revive already? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. I didn't even realize here. That is craziness. Uh I I I'm oh, shocked. Crazy. I'm shocked. All right. I have to I have to edit this. I'm go ahead and go ahead and talk there. Nah, I'm telling you, I'm not shocked at all saying right now. You see a guy that just all killed a Zerg lineup and he goes down in the fifth game. You don't say, nah, sorry, that's your lot. You say, hang on a minute, bro. Let me hold your beer for you. Well, And here's some sunglasses. Here's a cigar. Here's a nice 4 by 4 pimped out Jeep. Go get him. <laughs> well, Rush is going to get this best of three. And, I mean, we're here on Polypoid. We're in vertical spawns. Hero has that 12 hatch down. This this should be an epic end to this series. 
I hope that Hero manages to pull this out, though. I still want to see more games here, Shun. Oh, I want to see every single game played right now. I want to see Hero just stomp house and show these Terrans what's up and show them what a real all kill looks like. <laughs> just reverse all kill. Unfortunately, he cannot get an all kill prize here. He's already been taken out. Uh, this is the revive. It's not possible to get an all kill from a revive. And Rush has already taken home that cash. So uh, that's not going to be possible here. But it would still be a huge, huge boon to his... Uh, to his ego, to his uh, sense of self-worth, or <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what else to say here, is his his confidence if he manages to uh, bring this back and actually, you know, all kill that Terran squad, it would be fantastic. He's going for glory right now, but it's a new day, a new morning, and it might not be the kind of happy variant that he'd be hoping for right now, and instead going to be facing a very vicious hero that's going to have some life breathed into him and the trust of his swarm, knowing that he is the one right now to carry the mantle of Queen of Blades. The, the queen himself has been dismantled. The matriarch is no more. There's a new Kerrigan in town, and it's taken the form of Hero Hisan. And we've got quite a few Marines sitting on this high ground here. I think Rush is, you know, looking at the number of Ling and thinking, I might be able to do something here with five Marines. Maybe I can push across the map. And without any information uh, out of Hero, you know, he's only got this one Overlord here on the left-hand side. There's a lot of open space where the Marines could slip out and, you know, try to make their way over here towards the natural. Looks like he will back off. He doesn't want to waste these Marines, so... Not going for that kind of high risk, high reward play of sending those in right now. But, uh, you know, with the speed being done, it's probably the better option here uh, just to back off and, and not take that risk. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, going for an on base third here and not also going for link speed would be suicide from Hero. I think he anticipates the two racks and he's very wise to anticipate that. So he wants to make sure there's nothing that can happen to him. He's going to be really safe against this guy. He knows what Rush is all about. He knows the kind of timings that he can abuse. He knows all the tricks in the book. Hero is one of the most knowledgeable pros out there. He's not necessarily on, like, say, the level of Flash where he's just got, like, a spreadsheet of timings in his head and he's seen every peculiar situation at least, like, seven or eight times. Not quite that level, but still a much higher plane of existence can Hero operate on with his cognitive ability here. That's a lot of Marines moving out right now. We got 10 Marines heading out with a medic trailing in the back. Lynx are going to spot this out. And we'll see. Maybe go for a little run by here. The medic is going to try to block in the wall, but it's not big enough. And the fire bats are going to pop out yeah. maybe to save uh, the day here. It looks like he will be able to save with the fire bats, but this is still very annoying. He could potentially slow down the eBay here, and the eBay uh, SEV will be killed. That is a big deal. That is going to slow down these turrets, and it's going to make uh, the Mutalus timing attack a little bit more powerful. He does finish off that eBay. I think it's going to be just barely on time here. Maybe he can slow down a turret or two. He does kill one turret. That's pretty good. Uh, he still does have to deal with this push, though, that's coming from Raj. He cannot leave the natural right now with those Mutalists. Otherwise, he will just be broken. So the Mutalists are going to come back here, focusing down one of the sunken. He really needs to focus his Marine Fire onto one sunken. He's actually splitting the shots a little bit, trying to focus down Mutus at the same time. This is not a very well-executed bust from Rush. That's the most brilliant hold I've ever seen with six Mutas, two Sunkins against that Bioforce hero. Really, ex the only way that would have been better if, if Rush was a worse player or just like really messed up and blundered. But no, the only thing he did wrong there was slightly split the focus of his bio slightly too much. Should have just chosen to gun down the Mutas, but he was worried about the micro of hero just dancing in and out of those shots and forcing less DPS onto those Sunkins and making it too hard to break him. He was so desperate to get some critical damage done then. He wasn't able to find it. Now hero going to be in the driver's seat once once more full control over the game state going forward, forcing Rush into a bit of a panic mode. Damage control right now for the Terran player, making sure this production is secure. Desperately trying to get the second turret online to zone out this production area from these muters. Currently nine in number, threatening this position. You see a third turret going in the main as well. He, Rush is not kidding around. He needs these turrets right now. Hero can just win the game straight up from this game state. If he doesn't start making lots of Marines, lots of turrets, and trying to panic, throw down as many barracks as possible to increase his production. Production. Right now, only producing out two barracks, not enough to keep up with this Mutalis. He needs at least three, four, ideally, because of how behind the curve he is. Looks like he's going to break off a couple of Mutas to head down to the bottom right. There was one Marine, I think, that made its way down there. Uh, does 
spot that base. Funny to see Hero throwing down the the, the natural base here. It's it's really become trendy as of late. It is harder to hold on to, but uh, if you're able to hold on to it, and these players have gotten very good at holding on to those positions, it's gonna it's gonna net you a much better. Uh, mid game with that extra gas coming up in the main as well the turrets are going to be broken here and we might not even make it to that mid game state with the supply depots going down in the front as well this is really getting bad for rush well um, hero was considering a free hatch muter all in potentially but now he's realizing he doesn't even have to three hatch muter all in anymore he can just maintain the current game state while still droning up the bottom right so now he's getting he's gonna double dip in value right now yeah look at this he's making lots of drones in the bottom right doesn't have to commit to this muter force at all to get the damage that he wants opens up this position like a peach just like biting into this juice and like this, uh, he's devouring rush right now he is starting to maintain some control of this production area once more but two turrets was not enough to hold that production zone especially with the bio being the natural like that really big misplay from rush you need like at least three turrets there maybe even four considering like how uh, likely it was that hero could have been going for an all-in muter play yeah rush uh, underestimating the mutilus control here maybe the mutilus number that was coming for him he thought maybe he killed more mutas in that fight uh, at the natural perhaps but he really didn't put much of a dent into the forces there for Hero and Hero now. With full control over this game, he's going to have very quick hive. He's going to have a ton of drones in the bottom left. He can really quickly add on extra hatches. You can see hatches already coming up in the main base. Those macro hatches are going to make a huge difference to his overall uh, you know, production schedule here. He's going to have huge amounts of lurker coming out to defend that bottom uh, left hand base he's gonna have that nidus up very quickly as well and we're gonna see a really quick four base out of him with a really awesome ultralist timing what can rush do to bring this one back i mean he's finally moving out on the map he's finally gonna put some pressure on the hero but i mean are we gonna see another lotto ship play here just going directly into two drop ships and, and skipping over the the vessels i mean it worked one time but i don't know man can it work again here i mean maybe but right now here is obfuscating the game state even further saying by building the evo in the bottom right so he won't necessarily scan that at the time that he wants he won't quite understand the timing or tech path of hero until maybe it's too late for him to optimize his effort in coming back into this game he does finally have his two star pots online at the 10 minute mark but the vessels will be lagging behind a little bit not that critical 10 minute timing he might have liked for so now we're going to be a little bit behind the curve the ebb and flow is no longer in his favor he doesn't have the kind of timing windows to abuse anymore and with this whole position lurker on the map if he does try and gain a little bit of ground to speed up the process he might you know, just just die right here right now if he doesn't wait for these vessels to come across and kind of like gets a little bit of itchy feet but instead looks like he is being slightly wise here and maintaining the position in the center he's he's trying to be baited into them with the muters here trying his best to to misguide him but rush is at least not going to be too foolish enough to fall for that does have the nidus canal set up now with the lurkers at both bases so not really any chance of rush coming here and punishing this unless he can somehow come in here and pop the the defiler when it comes out with a, a an irradiate but right now i don't even see the vessels out on the map so i think they're just pulling energy maybe trying to obfuscate the fact that he could have gone for drop ships here and trying to keep here in a defensive posture thinking about drop ships maybe uh, it's just curious to not see any vessels out just yet maybe waiting for a radiant energy and a radiant upgrade to finish before um, giving them uh, an opportunity to maybe get picked off here also waiting for some marines to escort them to the main army is a good idea but uh hero is actually starting to push forward with his army does he have a defiler with this if he's got a defiler coming here yeah. oh no no this is bad here i mean he's he's just made two drop ships he's made two drop ships. he's gonna load up and send those forces away right as the uh, defiler comes into the natural this is this is horrible this is horrible right now for rush rush gonna avoid this fight right now but the defiler can't be avoided it's gonna run right up into the natural it's going to uh, set up this dark swarm in a perfect position hero has to break this right now this is his only chance his only chance yeah. he's gonna try and yeah, go for it go. but there's the, the dark swarm dark swarm shuts him down gg hero wow. taking that game away shutting down rush the best of three here won by hero and now the comeback can truly begin for the zerg squad from zero to hero guys queen is out hero's back let's get it
Royal gonna be the next Terran player sent out here on Apocalypse Hero. Absolutely our hero for this week of KSCM. Uh, bringing it back from the brink. It was almost a complete shutout. But he's at least managed to give us a series here that we can be happy with. Uh, from this point on, I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope that here's going to you know, make this even more exciting by taking us to, you know, a third, fourth, fifth game here. But, uh, I mean, already taking on uh, Rush and taking him out is, is it's pretty amazing. Oh, by saying, guess what? What's that? I just had a urine stream that was like thawed out Austin Powers in terms of duration. How's that for obscure British references? Nobody wants to hear about your urine stream, all right? This I I know exactly what you're talking about. The, 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 the twelve the twelve people the twelve people that speak my language are rejoicing right now. All you other like five thousand, ten thousand degenerates, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right after Austin Powers gets thawed, he's defrosted. Um, Shin has been defrosted here in the stream. He's finally, uh, you know, allowed to, to fully become awake after uh, Zergs bring this one back. He was on ice here as Rush was just crushing through everything. But you know, he's finally been brought out of the ice and... We're going to be able to cast this with full efficiency now. Hero bringing it back for us. And what can he do here on uh, Apocalypse? It's a tough map. It's not easy to take a third base here. You have to play kind of a different style. And Royal's already going to be mixing it up pretty hard here. He's going to throw down that factory. Maybe go for something like what we saw Hero do. I think it was against Jadong. Go for like a run by with a bunch of uh, vultures or something like that. Here really wants to get right. in here and see what the heck is going on. But Royal really preventing him from doing that. But also revealing that there's only one Marine, which is a, kind of a big tell right now. Yeah, if Hero can react to this in such a way that you just dealt with my obscure reference, rather flawlessly, I might say as well, saying I'll be, I'll be happy because yeah, you dealt with that pretty well. I'm not gonna lie, I threw you a little bit of a curveball there, saying you just like knocked that out of the park. I'm impressed. <laughs> that was not an easy one, man. That was uh, that was one of the, the impressed, man. Well done. references we've ever had. But well done. No, 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 no. <laughs> well done, man. I, I'm, I, I take my hat off to you, man. I take my monkey hat off to you. <laughs> All right. Well, put that bowler. Cap totally back. Put, put that bowler cap back on Shin. We need you at your best here. We're going to go ahead <laughs> and uh, try to knock this one out of the park. This cast out of the park. The rest of the games we've got here, I'm sure they're going to be fantastic. Royal not adding on a machine shop here, so it's not going to be that run by play, but it could still potentially be a drop play. We're going to have a Wraith first, and then we'll see if he ends up adding on, uh, putting an add on on that and, and going into a drop. Um, might just be an add on for. A potential, you know, v Valkyrie follow-up, something like that. But look at this hero hiding some yeah. Hydra. He's going to maybe go for a Hydra bust here. Uh, well, I think he's also a little bit worried about the potential of a run by here. Um, he doesn't mm. know for sure whether or not there's a machine shop. So there is this potential of the Wraith coming in while there's also a, a run by also going to be maybe soon transpiring. So he's worried about both. He's got five. Yeah, five hydras is probably about the perfect amount for the five minute mark. And then maybe slowly add on a few more if he wants to be a bit more serious. Five, if it was two port Wraith, this isn't actually enough. He actually just probably died of two port Wraith, but he's pretty confident about the one one one. So he's, fa he's fairly certain that five hydras is the right critical mass to initially defend against the, the potential Wraith and uh, Vulture run by. Going to be just coming out and getting some DPS down on that Vulture as well, making sure that if it was a run by, that he will damage one of these quickly enough that he can uh, prevent them from doing too much damage should they come in. But instead, going to be losing this Overlord for the, the price of coming out onto the map. He wants to go for a timing here, pressure the front before the bunker is finished. Maybe he can get an SCV kill or two. If he's going into range after this, he does have the timing here with two hatch Hydra to just break Royal if there's not a good enough repair on this bunker. And that's kind of what he's threatening right now. He's not necessarily going to do that. He just wants to kind of make Royal be a little bit more desperate in thinking defensively here that there's a potential of this two hatchery timing and try and slow down any potential of a counter damage being done. There's two vultures here, but because the one is one of them is very damaged, he won't be able to come in and kill any drones. I mean, Hero doing just the the exact thing that I wish Jadong would have done, honestly, in that game versus uh, right. Rush Rush. You know, showing some pretty interesting play and, you know, not making any adaptations 
uh, was Jadong in that game. But this game, you can really see Hero mentally unpacking what Royal is doing and figuring out the best way to deal with it, figuring out the best way to handle it. It's it's fantastic to see. I really love to, to see how he plays here. Um, so reactive and really understanding the game state. He's going to send out a drone for his third base right now. He knows he can't break Royal right here, but he's going to you know slowly try to figure out what Royal is doing and how he needs to react. I think it's going to be a follow-up into Bio, so Hero should be going into... Uh, some lurker play here coming up shortly maybe even throwing down a spire coming up soon as well he yeah, absolutely is shoot oh, observation is. as always saying he's definitely going yeah he's definitely going straight into bio we when, when you go um like late late add-on like this and you're not getting an add-on your your starport early it's usually indicative of a more sk way of thinking he does have the option though of going into um either a tank push here if there's a lack of queen's nest uh and he could also uh if he wanted to do valkyries instead of Vessels, but not really going for the Valkyrie play, uh, not going for the Valkyrie play this time. Look at the Irradiate instead on these Musilis. Did, did split that reasonably well, but not quite as quickly as he'd hope. So taking quite some softening on this Musa stack, but now forcing the mining away from the mineral line now, really slowing down everything but the gas coming in. And because the gas is still going on, going to come in and hit those SCVs. Another Irradiate though coming down. Finally, a fairly decent split, but it doesn't matter. The Musilis have sustained enough damage now that they've lost their potency and ability to harass. So going to be running away with their tail between their legs hopefully to live to fight another day and instead gonna be taking this third base here and setting up for the late game hopefully but not actually building a queen's nest i i can't we might see a tank push here saying i don't know i'm surprised we didn't see a couple of scourge made with this initial uh, attack here he's gonna build some now but when you come in and you're like planning to dive the turrets like that it's so good if you have a pair of scourge with you because you can just dive in, draw the turret fire. There's no Marines to like snipe your Scourge and you can just pick off a, one or two of those vessels that slows down the Terran so, so much. But now, I mean, we've got Marines here. We've got Marines ready. We're gonna have an Irradiate down on these Mutas. They're not as high in number anymore. Hero, a little bit slow getting into this tech, as you said, and I'm a little bit worried for him now with this number of vessels that are out. He's going to have a big timing to come across. He's got the machine shop on there. So, yeah, it might be that tank push. How does he get it out of the back of his base, though? Look at how stacked everything is up in that, <laughs> in that main. Like, there's no pathway for the yeah. tank to actually get to the front. Yeah, you're not wrong saying it's a little bit clunky there. I think he can, I don't know, it's like a maze. It's almost like like sunken defense where you try and make it like as long as possible for the unit to actually get through there without completely blocking it. So he's going to have to, you know, try and like navigate. There's only two mining gas right now, so he'll be able to squeeze through there a little bit easier maybe. But one thing we can say that was going really hero's way is that he stopped the mining for a, for a long time in the main base. And that means that this tank push isn't as viable anymore. He didn't have the minerals that he needed to spend the gas, so he wasn't able to get the siege mode going get a tank produced to actually hit that timing anymore so just by coming into the main base and opening up the pocket like that and threatening uh, all that harassment and forcing a little bit of SCVs off the line even though he stabilized with a very strong vessel count he did slow down the tanks being produced he's finally getting a tank out now like we thought he would but it has slowed down this timing soon yeah I think the tank's stuck in the main I think he actually just had to lift off one of the barracks to let that out this is, it, uh, it, it, it's a little bit rough but he will get that to the front line now and yeah, we're going to replace that barracks, move it over to the other side so that he can start to produce more tanks here. And this lurker push, I don't know, man. It is a lot of lurker, a lot of ling here. But with this number of irradiates that are available, oh, he does get one of the vessels and will be able to back away now. But this is this is a little bit tough. We've got two bunkers here with a lot of irradiate and tank. I don't think he can bust through there without defiler, man. It's just a little bit too hard, I feel. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, the fact that the lurkers have to keep unbarring and rebarring, unless you get a really good surround and initial engagement where the marines are then in like a state of panic and like retreating or tactically withdrawing, if you want to be a bit more PC about it, like yeah, there's not really any situation of like making that go your way. There's just too much control in the Terran's hands to work with. But this big force can do it though. There's not enough bio here. There's a small contingency trying to meet up with it actually to reinforce it. If there was a timing there for Hero to get in there and get on top of that before the tanks arrived, maybe he could have dealt with that force. But it wasn't aware of that currently he doesn't have the ability to just scan ahead like the luxury that Terran has that's why this matchup is so hard for Zerg but Terran can just basically have map hack with these comsats and really understand exactly what they should do and when and the Zerg is the one trying to figure things out and get a grip on things and look at all these 
to oh, his Lurkers is getting irradiated as well, losing a lot of the gas uh, in the in the uh, the engine for him to work with now, and also getting irradiated on these muters, not really having the critical mass of units to deal with this. Currently leveraged, he has a big force that's banked up to the south here of Lurker Ling that now can start to fight, but he's not quite got the, the forces that he needs to just walk over this. There is a strong ability for Royal to just maintain the center control here and use these siege tanks to full potency and dominate him soon. Ooh, Royal doing a great job retreating to the tanks and you know, pushing forward with the Marine Medic. The faster, more nimble forces getting up there onto the high ground, throwing down a bunch of irradiance and then backing up to the less... Oh no, the tanks! The tanks going way no, too far no, no. forward here! All the tanks oh. are going to end up dying to these links and the uh, lurkers are going to get great uh spines here from the high ground the marines not able to deal with them there's still a lot of marines coming up from the flank but that was a serious misstep from royal and hero here looks like he will lose all of his uh lurker but that was a pretty decent trade about the best that he could have hoped for in that situation Wow, yeah, that actually really went his way, considering how bad that initially started. Those tanks, in a way, like acted as a bait and kind of helped him get the trade that he wanted. Not as quite as cost efficient as he had hoped for, but now the majority of the, the Zerg threat has been dealt with. He can advance on these these positions, desperately trying to reinforce um, this army. Though doesn't have a lot of units left here, so if Hero can get on top of him quickly before the reinforcements arrive, maybe he can just break out here. Does have a few scourge picking up one of those vessels? But here come the reinforcements finally to kind of establish uh, control over his high ground does lose that tank though beautiful pick off from hero there's one tank remaining but these irradiates are really hurting here right now not being able to reduce the vessel count in a substantial way is starting to cost him and eat into the this battle of attrition that he's trying to war with uh Roy. it's a little bit of a tug of war situation where he's not even able to saturate the bottom right base not even mining gas there yet is hero still churning away on just three gases and he's starting to hurt him a little bit he can't quite keep up with royals great unit control here saying uh, royal just rallying forward like an absolute beast we do have crackling finishing up he gets the tank really important pick off there but he's starting to lose these eggs uh one lurker two lurkers gonna pop out here maybe enough to save him for now but where's the defiler we need that defiler so bad there it is finally popping out here maybe hero could just barely barely hang on but can he hang on to the fourth base that he took down at the bottom right he really needs to uh, save this base and get that oh, next base no. up and online. Does he have a consume? Consume? No she consume. Not ready. It's not, not, ready, ready. not ready. Oh no, not ready. it's not there in time. He's going to break through here. It looks like the lurkers all going to fall here. One sunken emergency sunken being thrown down right now, oh. but Royal is pushing through hero on the full retreat. Now he's not going to be able to hold on Royal with the tanks on high ground here. Okay, one more Defiler does pop out. He should have that uh, consumability up now. Links are gonna come from behind. Maybe he can just barely hold this. Links coming from all different directions, getting on top of the forces here. There's maybe not enough medic energy remaining. They've been on the map for so long. They have to be running low now. He is gonna hold on. Oh my gosh. Absolutely ridiculous hero with the macro play and the Defiler able to just barely hang on he doesn't have any uh you know m money coming in from that fourth base yet he doesn't even have one drone on the gas he's just been desperately trying to hold on for now but finally i think with put this push out he can start to mine that gas he can start to bring this one back yeah, StarCraft's a game of attention. You can you have a limited amount of attention and APM that you can utilize at any given time. And he was full hands on deck and just not dying right there, which is the most important thing for him to do. Everything else was like a, a seventh priority in terms of how important it was. The only thing that was important there was just not dying to this absolute stellar control from Royal. Non-stop aggression, laying siege to the Zerg for minutes at a time, really understanding how to be a master in this matchup and really take the hurt to the Zerg players. But now we see Hero finding a way of utilizing these defiles out on the center of the map which is actually quite hard to do usually and keeping the terran player at bay while well, he finally now gets his fourth base online sitting at 70 supply to 100 he did get a very fast plus two carapace timing which is going to help him out a lot now keeping up with the terran in the grades going forward so maybe if he can just hold on to this pocket on the right hand side now he'll be fine but there's only a couple of lurkers here no defiler in sight just yet so he needs to buy as much time as possible with these links kind of making it seem he's kind of appearing strong right now while weak which is very um Sun Tzu, you want to appear strong when, when you're weak and appear weak when you're strong. And he's, he's actually doing a great job of executing that in this matchup. Every time he was in a bad position, he managed to hold on just a little bit of time to finally get out that beautiful plague saying, wow.
Great, great, great play here, but there's so many fire bats. Okay, he does get rid of the fire bats at least. The fire bats go down here. Uh, the plague helping out immensely right now and hit so many of those vessels. That is an insane value plague. That is some of the play. That that is some of the spells that can actually bring you back into this game. Is spells like that that hit all of the vessels, and then if we can follow up with maybe one Muta to finish that off, that could be massive. He almost got another great plague there, but using the Dark Storm instead, Hydra in the mix actually picking off some of the. He, I didn't realize he was getting Hydra upgrades during this, but he did get Hydra speed at least, maybe Hydra range as well. Just barely able to get that going, and oh my god, look at this drop that's going to come in. Oh, if Hero's ready for this, maybe he could shut this down and, you know, actually win this game off of that. But if this manages to get into the main and Hero's, you know, fo forcing out on the map and he's trying to, you know, defend everywhere at the same time, he might be really caught off guard by this and take a lot of damage here. Hero's got great game sense. The moment the dropships are moving out, he did move some Scourge into position. He only had one pair of Scourge. Now he has two. So he was sniffing this out. He can catch two of these dropships, maybe. Come on. Oh, he gets two dropships. Ships saying this is crazy right now. Hero's playing like an absolute god in this game. But look at all these fire bats from Royal. He's not kidding around either. This absolutely crazy game right now. Fire bats descending upon the main base right now. But luckily, Hero pulling out all of those drones to avoid critical damage here. And now these fire bats don't have the DPS that they need to kill these buildings. So he's not going to get any of the tech right now. Saying he will trade well with the links that are coming in. But a nice little plague's going to come in and help deal with that effectively. Saying, wow, I'm really impressed by Hero so far. So funny. He plagues all of his own buildings there as well that's gonna drop them down by quite a lot but you know as long as another drop doesn't come into that base he should be able to hold on to that now a dark swarm here needs to come down he's just bleeding lings right here and he's gonna get irradiated as well he does manage to throw down a dark swarm just barely but this is a really tough position here for hero he's had to you know draw his attention into the main for quite some time oh we're gonna have a, a dark swarm here just barely able to save this base that uh knight is actually very close to going down. Some Scourge getting out here. There's the Nidus being targeted. It will be targeted. Can he get a Plague? Plague? No Plague. Not a Plague. Just a Dark Swarm here. That's not enough. And he is going to shove forward here with all of these. Oh, and a drop comes into the main. No way. The drop into the main. Oh, no. Oh man, he's doing oh. so much damage right now. Like three lings are gonna clear this out, but the natural's being broken here. Royal breaking through everywhere. Finally, ultras are gonna pop, but they're just seconds too late here to save all of these drones. And you can see the supply just plummeting here for hero. 48 to 124. This is just about over a uh, one single firebat. Actually, two firebats here in the main dealing so much damage as well. We've got nowhere to mine here for hero. Hero falling apart. The natural is going to die. Everything is dead here. Royal takes this game. GG. What a finale. Oh my gosh. Crazy, crazy Craziness. game there. Like, Hero was playing like a god saying, but it didn't matter because the devil himself showed up and he rules the Earth and he took control of that planet just like Earth and had a really convincing victory there. Absolutely decimating the Zerg player before he could get into those 4-1 Ultras that would have had a really good time in trading, especially with the support of those Dark Souls. A lot of critical errors there from Hero, though. Not having enough energy on some of his defiles, only having like 100 energy apiece, just relying on pure Dark Souls and not really getting out enough of those chain plagues he needed to finally stabilize in that game I'm, I, I can't believe the quality of game we just had there though that was the best game of the night I'm glad that we went out that way if we were going to go out I'm glad we went out with a bang saying those are some fireworks in that game yeah we're not going to get that ZVP finals that we were looking for but we got a hell of a consolation prize here an amazing mm. set from Hero at least pulling out all the stomps here bringing back the Zerg in that series and giving us a great semi-finals. I'm really glad that we had him here in this lineup. Otherwise, it would have been a little bit rough. Wow. What a great, what a great semi-finals, man. I'm just, I'm just so happy that we, we had that going on. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get to see JYJ and Sharp come out, but Royal put up a heck of a game there. Yeah, I would have actually liked to see someone like Zealot take the position of Queen, but I understand the logic there. Queen's a much more ex accomplished player in the sense of experience in these environments. Maybe could have still outperformed Zealot, but I really feel like you need a kind of sniper player in a ZVT. And Zealot, that's his specialty. Zealot's great at sniping Terran players. And at the very least, he probably would have gotten maybe one kill, and that would have been a lot better than just Queen dying the way he did.
Uh, Queen, I mean, like we said, the butt of every joke right now. He is uh, really not performing at his best. He's really fallen apart kind of terribly here in professional StarCraft. We hope that he can make a comeback. There still seems to be you know, some faith in the man. You know, he's two-time ASL champion there. That's why they put him in this lineup here. But he's really, I think, mentally maybe defeated. And I, I don't think that that's the case for Hira at all. After this loss, he's going to be feeling more confident than ever. I think he's put up some great games here. He took down players that no other Zerg was able to take on. I think he's going to be feeling great about this result. Even if he didn't manage to get the all kill, like the reverse sweep here. Uh, I think he's still going to be feeling fantastic. Oh, absolutely. You can't want for more, really. Like, having that kind of streak in this kind of environment, I mean, that's like the stuff that dreams are made of for these pro gamers. These guys aren't slouches. Like, there's players that have been around for, like, decades that have been playing games against these pro gamers and taking games off these pro gamers, but they're still considered up-and-coming players. And the, the crazy zero-sum game that is StarCraft, where Flash somehow managed to establish himself as that zero-sum at the very top of that hierarchy with like, the canyons of game experience and knowledge separate these pro games it's kind of insane the depth that this game has saying and, and i'm i feel privileged to be able to sit here and cast this with you i'm feeling greatly privileged here to watch uh, these these players and especially rush man let's talk about him for a second the depth of play that he displayed here today was astounding like all the different uh you know sneaky plays that he pulled out like the the versus jadon game uh you know he went for wraiths and he went for uh, the the quick uh vulture timing he's gone for a bunch of different variations of a marine medic build he's pulled out all kinds of interesting plays here we the only thing we haven't seen from him is like a mech switch or a full-on mech game but i'm sure he's also capable of that just really feels like mm is like his his wheelhouse his comfort zone and he plays brilliantly in that uh in that game state yeah, yeah. I'm curious why we actually didn't see um, light going out for maybe Sharp's position. I'm, I'm actually curious about some of the choices there. Maybe there's a scheduling issue. Maybe some of the lineup wasn't able to make it and they maybe wanted to and they had to kind of re-slide re things around. I don't know exactly what's going on there. I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to give any ASL spoilers. But yeah, maybe there's something going on there with scheduling that the lineup wasn't quite as like a team as maybe it could be. But I still think both teams had a really strong lineup in. I'm really surprised by the result. I thought Zerg was going to do so much better than they did. Uh, mm. I'm actually still impressed though that hero was able to come out and represent though like if, if he had also fallen flat on his face that would have been very disappointing but he gave us some really great games so i'm still happy with the result overall despite not getting that zvp finals and uh, who knows with the, the terran having this new vigor in them i mean it's gonna be tougher for them in the tv matchup like we were saying earlier the the scouting information factor protoss players have a much easier time scouting terrans which is why the matchup's so difficult and the terrans always playing from a little bit of a position of being behind in the sense of being in the dark for so long and having to scan ahead of their army constantly constantly and check for the expansion timings of the protoss and not really being able to get in there to scout because the protoss players just walling everywhere and having dragoons blocked on the ramp or whatever what have you so yeah starcraft eventually comes down to scouting when you're not in a mirrored matchup but uh and unfortunately the terran players will have a harder time of it in the, the tvp finals but i'm hoping it, they won't just fall flat on their faces i hope it won't just be a repeat of these previous weeks we've seen say and i hope that we see the terran players finally turn up and take these apes to the zoo well, they've already turned things around here with this semifinal. So, yeah, I'm I'm hoping for the same. I hope that they can turn it on um, like they did here today in that finals, guys. That's going to be coming out next week. We're not sure exactly which day that's going to be coming down. It seems like because of scheduling issues like you were talking about with the ASL, they're changing mm -hmm. up the strategy. They're putting it on a Thursday or a Friday rather than uh, on the typical, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, days. It just depends on you know where you're at guys if you're in america or korea it's a it's a different day uh a little bit ahead of the curve here in korea so um it's going to be one day late probably uh just like this episode but guys we're really looking forward to it we're super glad that you're all here uh, with us on this journey guys thank you so much for joining us here today it's been a huge huge pleasure uh i've got one little announcement though before we leave you here, guys. Um, Ooh. Shun, uh, you've been with us for an entire year. We really appreciate your dedication. It's almost a year, man. I think it was April 
2023 when this all <laughs> began. And we were just talking earlier about uh, a new microphone for you. And I think that we'd we'll be happy to provide yeah. that to you. I think we're going to, we're going to give you a huh? microphone. We're going to buy you a microphone so that we can uh, upgrade this cast a little bit. Yeah. Investing you into serious? the microphone. You serious? Controlling me right now? No, absolutely, man. You've been working right with a, a headset microphone, guys. Everybody out there. I know that there's been some <laughs> audio issues today in the uh, or in, in the KCM. It's been uh, a little bit rough. And uh, we're going to upgrade that. We're going to invest into this stream. And uh, guys, thank you, everyone, for your support, especially those out on Patreon. We love you. We're going to see you guys in the next week of KCM. It's coming up. The TVP Finals. I don't think we're going to have the microphone ready by then, but for next season, for sure, <laughs> in April, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great quality. And we'll see you guys there. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.